In an essay in The Nation, James Baldwin said, The children are always ours, every single one of them, all across the globe, and I am beginning to suspect that whoever is incapable of recognizing this may be incapable of morality. And I want to keep it real with you. I feel like we all have sort of bought into the idea that some children or other are worth more, are more important, that some people or other are worth more or are more important. I'm going to lose a lot of y'all with this, and it is what it is because it's my truth and I'm going to say it. I do not root for black people. I don't fight primarily for black people because I am a black person. I do it because black people have it the worst in this country. I do it because we are the people that if we were free, the rest of y'all would be free. But in my heart, I don't care what someone looks like. I have been around too many different people and have experienced being in community with basically every kind of person. And I know that, that people are individuals. And there is obviously and understandably reason to distrust people from certain demographics more because their programming has been worse, because their propagandizing has been worse. But I really think that we also have to understand why people are the way they are. It's not because of what's in their blood or the color of their skin. It's because of how they've been instructed. And the worst part is that we've all been instructed in a lot of the same ways because anti-blackness runs through the black community as well. The 14 words of the right wing that essentially is mirrored by just about everybody because everybody, because they're being in a reactionary and again, understandable way, they're reacting to the fact that only certain children seem to be cared for. So they're like, well, we're only going to care about ours. But in the end, that's not the goal, right? It's a stopgap to try and protect certain people in order to create a field where maybe everybody can get a chance. But the goal is that everybody is cared for and held and has the opportunity to live. I reject and I will push back on anyone who says that I shouldn't care about any children in the world who are suffering, about any people in the world who are suffering. I feel that as a human being, I just feel it. And I refuse to shut myself down because of who those people are. And there are people, even people who I otherwise respect, who are essentially asking me to do that, who are saying, well, why do you care about those people? They wouldn't care about you. Do you know how fucked up that is? It has become not fashionable to talk about unity because people are like, well, you just can't trust white people. And OK, like, you know, maybe you get a solid percentage of them, <laughs> like, like, let's keep it a buck. Yes, obviously. But that's not the way to go into it. Not to mention the fact that we live in America and most of the people are white people. So what do you think is going to happen? Different groups of people, especially those that have been minoritized in this world, have an extremely understandable and protective urge to protect their own first. And I get it. And I'm not saying that that's not a thing in this world that isn't important. But what I am saying is that it is not what will help us win. It's not what will help us thrive. It is a trauma response and a survival mechanism, but it's not what is going to take us into the world that we want to see. Because there is a reactionary instinct for revenge within a lot of people. And I have it myself, but I know that it is not my healthiest nor the most strategic place to come from when I'm talking about what we need to do to move forward. Your feelings are always important. And anyone who tries to get you to downplay them or to push them aside is not your friend. However, your feelings do not dictate what the strategy should be. Your feelings are not the thing that should tell you exactly what you need to do in a certain circumstance. Maybe you're moving because of those feelings, but that should not be the driver. When we feel the most strongly, we don't act the most wisely. And those actions can sometimes hurt, in the end, our goals. After essentially a lifetime of being told that you were in danger, and that certain people were after you, maybe you would look aside when the worst things possible on the planet were happening to those people. Your feelings can be valid and understandable and make your actions abhorrent. To go back to the quote I began with, what do children become? They become adults. So we all belong to all of us. And that's not some kumbaya shit. That's just the reality of it. We have one world. The differences between us are largely a trick of the light. And there's a reason that certain figures who push very, very like ethnicity, culture, race specific messaging, they are allowed to continue doing so. But ones that talk about unity have always been the ones to get got by the state and otherwise. 
I'm not naming any names or calling anyone out because I do believe that there is a place and there is a voice that needs to come out that is reactionary because of the things that people suffer. But those aren't the people who are actually going to help us get out of our conditions. And that's evidenced by the fact that largely they have not. I don't fuck with nationalists of any kind. I don't fuck with states of any kind, especially not those that are based on conditions of birth being the ones that you need for entry. It's always going to be a really bad thing for humankind, always. And you can't convince me otherwise. And I truly do want everyone to get free. And that's also people who, because of how they were born, were placed into the oppressor class. Because their freedom is going to be my freedom in the end. And someone will take this to mean that I am siding with colonizers or whatever or being too gentle on them. But pump the brakes and just think about it for a second. If we all need to get free for us to be free, if no one is free unless we all are free, doesn't that also include people who have been indoctrinated? Doesn't that also include people who, from children, were taught things that were lies that would supposedly benefit them, but don't really benefit them because in the end, it all benefits the less than 1%, the vulture class. We have to take the messaging of humanity and like seeing the humanity in people. We have to take that back from the conspirituality people, from the people who have been using that as ways essentially to undergird the overculture by ignoring the concerns of marginalized people. No, 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 we don't need to ignore them. We need to include them in that messaging. But we also have to remember that the baseline message is still true. We will not dehumanize anyone because of who they are. Because of what they've done is, is a different story, but because of who they are, never. I will never do that. I will not let someone else name for me what another person is. And you shouldn't either.